Every year, hundreds of new motherboards are released to market. Some target budget-conscious consumers, some target the large mid-market segment, and some, like the EVGA Z170 Classified K, know exactly what you want to do with your new CPU, overclock the snot out of it. The Z170 Classified K is currently EVGA's flagship motherboard for the LGA 1151 platform. It was released earlier this year to replace their EATX version of this board, the Z170 Classified. Now, while the original Classified did hold some advantages over the K version, the new board does have some significant improvements, which we'll get to in a little bit. For now, let's talk about some general specs. As the name implies, the Z170 Classified K sports Intel's newest chipset in support of its newest socket. This board is compatible with all current Skylake processors from the mainstream King 6700K all the way down the chain to the entry level Pentium G4400. Now, while I wouldn't recommend spending $230 on a motherboard and dropping in a $60 processor, you're free to make your own decisions for which you'll likely be mocked incessantly. But to get the most out of this board, you're going to need to drop some serious coin on a CPU to squish down on top of those oh so delicate 1,151 pins. While a 6600K will certainly work here, and work very well I might add, a 6700K is really what you should be aiming for if you're purchasing a motherboard in excess of $200. EVGA has gone to great lengths to ensure that you're going to be able to push your CPU's clock speeds as high as they will go when using this board. They've beefed up the power delivery to eight phases and included hardy heat sinks over the VRMs. There's a physical dual bio switch on the motherboard allowing you to go for broke with your core multiplier and strap. This will ensure that even if you manage to completely lock up your system while aiming for five gigahertz, you can always fall back on previous settings boot the system as normal, and if you so choose, reflash the stock BIOS. The motherboard traces are routed inside a six layer PCB, which EVGA claims provides greater stability during heavy loads and higher possible overclocks. They also construct the socket with a significantly higher content of gold, allowing for greater conductivity and a cleaner signal. Now EVGA has built in onboard physical power and reset switches that prove extremely convenient when test booting the system for the first time or when using the Classified K on an open air test bench. EVGA has included four dim slots traditionally positioned to the right of the socket. You could jam up to 64 gigs of DDR4 in here at speeds of up to 3600 megahertz. This is the first major difference that this new version of the Classified brings to the table. The original only allowed for a measly 3200 speed memory. There are eight SATA ports located next to the chipset along with two SATA Express. For additional storage options, there are also a total of three M.2 slots, two of which are of the key M variety and can thus accept SSDs. The original classified board only had support for one M.2 SSD. Onboard audio has gotten so good these days that only sound engineers will likely need a separate audio solution. The classified K has an eight channel Realtek HD audio controller up from six channels on the classified. One thing you do lose out on with this board versus the original is the number of available fan headers, although five is usually enough for most people. They're located here, 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 and here. Got it? Another slightly more interesting change is the switch from the availability of four-way SLI down to two-way plus physics. This change makes sense, however, as the mainstream Skylake platform tops out at 20 PCIe lanes in the 6700K. Using more than two graphics cards will mean that you will inevitably run into bandwidth issues, and Intel has generally pushed enthusiast users to its x99 platform if this is their desired configuration for this very reason. Taking a look at the rear I.O., we see that the Classified K doesn't skimp here either, with dual gigabit ethernet ports, two USB 2.0 ports, four USB 3.0 ports, and two USB 3.1 ports. There's also a display port out, an HDMI out, and a clear CMOS button, and you get your standard audio bank, including optical output. Unfortunately, both the old and the new versions of this board omit a USB Type-C connection, which isn't a huge deal right now, but likely will be pretty soon. So what doesn't this board have? Well, RGB LEDs. Sometimes it's just too much. 
I'm glad that some companies still feel it's okay to release a high-end product that doesn't need to light up. The Classified K is entirely black and will fit into any build with ease. So let's jump into the BIOS and take a quick look at what EVGA offers you there. All right, so we are all up in this BIOS. Let's take a look. You can see that mouse support is enabled by default, but it is pretty laggy. That's okay, it's just the BIOS, but it may just be easier to use a keyboard if you're gonna be in here often. So let's start up at the top left. You can see that this is your memory configuration. You can see that I only have one DIMM slot populated right now with eight gigs of RAM. And it shows you right here, eight gigs, and this is the speed that it's running at. It also shows right here what your CPU is currently running at. This is the multiplier here, 40, and this is the strap or the base clock, which is 100 megahertz. So we have 40 times 100 is four gigahertz. That's what the CPU is running at currently. It also shows you that you do have hyper-threading and there are four total physical cores on the chip. The PCI Express over here shows you what you have available and what you have connected. Right now I have no devices connected. I'm just running this for the purposes of showing you the BIOS. Because this is an overclocking motherboard, it does have functionality where it shows you the temperature of your VRMs. It's very important when you're going for a high overclock to keep your VRM temperature low. And as we talked about before, there are pretty hardy heat sinks on the VRMs, which are gonna keep them nice and cool while you're pushing these frequencies higher and higher. Right now, the CPU is running at 39 degrees. I have a stock cooler hooked up right now to the 6700K. So that's why the temperatures are a little higher than they should be with the stock settings in place. And as you can see, this is what EVGA is pushing with this board. This is an overclocking motherboard. The first tab here just says overclock. And this is what allows you to change your multiplier, change the strap or the frequency right here. You could change it by going in here and typing a different value. You could also change your voltage, which you're gonna need to jack up a little bit if you're going for higher overclocks. The memory tab shows you what memory you have installed, what speed you can achieve, and also where you can adjust your XMP profiles. Now the advanced tab is where you're gonna find all the additional information about your board and all the other options that you have. This includes things like your CPU configuration and graphics configuration. This allows you to toggle on or off the integrated graphics on the chip. This also allows you to change your PCIe configuration. You see right here that you can adjust the speed of the PCIe slots. Normally everything is set to auto and honestly you should probably leave it that way. But if you wanna move around a graphics card and you wanna change one slot from times eight to times 16, this is how you do it. You also have options for your SATA configuration, USB configuration, power management and things of that nature. The hardware monitor configuration, is where you're gonna be able to take control of all your fans and see your temperatures. So as you can see right now, I have one fan plugged into the CPU2 header and no other fans plugged in. And it shows you the speed that that fan is currently running at and it's on smart mode. Now you can change this mode to maximum or you could change it to a certain percentage or anything like that. But smart mode is where you should probably keep it if you're not really sure about where you wanna keep your fans. Now the boot tab is where you're gonna see the, the options to change your boot priority. Also your number lock options, speakers, things of that nature. You turn fast boot on or off through this and also you can adjust the system time and date. Now I think EVGA's BIOS is laid out very well. It starts with the thing that they feel is most important and that the people that are buying this motherboard are gonna be most interested in and that's overclocking. But when you're applying an overclock, what you wanna do is you wanna go for your overclock first and then adjust your memory setting. So it's almost like they've put this in order as far as what you should do first when you first open up the BIOS. I really like that they have these graphical representations of your memory, your PCI Express, and also temperatures and voltages. It's, these are the important things for overclocking and giving you a nice, bold, clear representation of what's going on with your system before you go into any of the other tabs is very important and I appreciate it. Now having used BIOS by basically every manufacturer out there, I could say that there are flaws to everyone, but for the most part, they're gonna get the job done. It's just kind of an ease of use thing where you try to figure out which one is right for you. This one is very simple and I like it. There's no advanced mode. This is just the way it is. If you buy this motherboard, you're in here to overclock and that's what it allows you to do. You don't have to access a separate mode to be able to change your voltage or your strap or anything like that. It's right here, it's on the first tab. EVGA has identified its audience and provides you with the tools to do what you wanna do with this board. So that's it for my review of the EVGA Z170 Classified K. It's flat out the best Z170 board I've ever tested. It has the most features, the hardiest overclocking ability, and the least amount of unnecessary frills and fuss. 
This board will be the heart of a custom water cooling product that I'm working on with AlphaCool. And I'd like to thank EVGA for sending it over for use in this review and that build. Make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss that build coming up soon on the channel. So what do you guys think of this board? How does it compare to similar offerings from Gigabyte and Asus? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, check out links below if you're interested in picking this up for your own build. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.